jour, aujourd'hui nous parlons des passe-temps avec faire. Today we're going to be using the verb faire to learn additional vocabulary related to hobbies or um, activities that you might enjoy. So, um, to remind us, les conjugaisons, the conjugations of the verb faire, you're already familiar with this verb, remember it's an irregular verb. You have je fais, tu fais, il, elle, and on fait. Nous faisons, vous faites, and il and elle font. Now, you'll notice when you um, see these new verb phrases that many of them have the preposition de with them. So, one thing you need to know about, the, about this preposition is when it's combined with a definite article, le, la, l apostrophe, or les, it sometimes makes a contraction. So, remember that le means... All of these are our definite articles. They mean the. Le, we use before a masculine singular noun. La, we use before a feminine singular noun. L apostrophe, we use before any noun that is singular that begins with a vowel, regardless, or vowel sound, regardless of if it's masculine or feminine. And then le, we use in front of all plural nouns, no matter what they start with. So, you'll notice that when combined with an article, the preposition de changes to du with, when it's combined with le. For la, it stays the same. De la, no contraction. De le, here, uh, no contraction. But with le here, it makes this contraction de. So, you will see these um, in this new vocabulary, and I just wanted you to be aware of what is going on. Faire du vélo or faire du cyclisme. You'll see both of these. Um, uh, there's also faire la bicyclette, which my friend um, from France told me was old lady speak, grandma speak for going, uh, for riding a bike. So I didn't add that one for you. But there are several synonyms here um, for riding a bike. Faire du jardinage or jardiner. So you can use this phrase with the verb faire, or you can simply use the ER verb jardiner. And remember, le jardin is going to be the yard, but it also can, in this context, can be a garden where you're growing plants, uh, whether those are flowers or vegetables. Faire une promenade. Faire une promenade. To take a walk. Faire du jogging. Faire du jogging. I think we've seen this before. Faire de la randonnée. Faire la randonnée, this is going to be hiking. Faire de l'alpinisme, faire de l'alpinisme. So this um, is going to be more of a mountain type climb. Think of um, the Alps in French, though, in France, I'm sorry, in Switzerland and Italy. They are a group of mountains, a mountain range. So, faire de l'alpinisme is going to be some sort of mountain climbing, whether it's sort of a mountain hike or, or you know, you need tools. Uh, I think all of those can fit into that category. Faire de l'escalade. Faire de l'escalade is going to be um, climbing in the sense of like a climbing wall, whether it's this type of indoor climbing wall or um, rock climbing outdoors. Um, faire de la balançoire. De la balançoire, whether this is something you still do now or might have done when you were younger, thinking of other outdoor activities. Faire la chasse, faire la chasse, ou chasser, chasser. So you can use faire la chasse to, for, to go hunting or this ER verb chasser, um, which also means to hunt. Faire du camping, faire du camping. Faire du bateau, faire du bateau, uh, a bateau is just a general word for boat, so um, you could use faire du bateau for any number of types of boats. Here, faire de la voile is specifically a sailboat, using um, the sails to make you go. Faire de la natation, faire de la natation ou nager. You'll see both, and um, we can use this phrase, um, for swimming, or um, might be simpler to just use this ER verb, nager, but you'll see both of those used. Faire de la plongée, faire de la plongée, or simply the ER verb, plonger, for diving, whether it's professional or just a little diving off the dock, like this boy. Faire de la plongée libre, faire de la plongée libre, this is snorkeling, 
So notice uh, snorkeling is when you're up near the surface of the water and you have this little um, mask with the uh, tube here to help you breathe. Faire la plongée sous-marine. Faire la plongée sous-marine. So this would be um, scuba diving. And see this uh, sous-marine is telling you that it's underwater, so completely underwater. Faire du ski. Faire du ski. You'll also, in general, if you say faire du ski, we sort of assume that you are meaning um, downhill snow skiing. But if you wanted to be specific and tell me that you are doing downhill snow skiing, since there are other kinds, um, you can also set, you could add these, either of these uh, descriptors. Faire du ski alpin. Remember we said the Alps were mountains. Or faire du ski de piste. Those are the phrases that tell us um, that this is snow skiing going downhill, which may be hard to tell from my picture here. Um, faire du snowboard or faire du cirque de neige. There are actually several ways to say this. Um, so sometimes you'll see faire du snowboard, just um, especially in France, they don't mind borrowing um, words from English. In Canada, sometimes they're a little more particular and they want to have uh, a more French sounding phrase. Um, so they actually have de la planche à neige, which I did not add here because I didn't want you to have three phrases memorized. Um, but faire du snowboard or faire du surf de neige, so think about surfing on snow like that. Faire un bonhomme de neige for another winter activity. Faire un bonhomme de neige. So um, obviously it's just to make a snowman or build a snowman. Faire de la luge. Faire de la luge, another um, winter Phrase for sledding. Faire du ski nautique. Now think about summer. Faire du ski nautique. So notice here we have faire du ski again. And when we add this nautique, it lets us know that it's on water. Uh, somewhat related to that, faire du wakeboard. Faire du surf. Faire de la lutte, so um, moving on to some other sports. Faire de la lutte for wrestling. Faire du patin à glace. Faire du patin, um, generally if someone said faire du patin, we would also sort of assume that it was um, ice skating, unless you um, specified that it was roller skating, roller blading, all those different things. But if you wanted to add a glace for the ice, you can. Faire des photos, faire des photos, so des photos is a cognate here, so um, that one's not too difficult. Faire la lecture, faire la lecture, and lire. So um, here you have to be careful. Um, when you see, as an English speaker, when you see the word lecture, it makes you think of a lecture, it makes you think of your teacher talking. Um, actually, in French, la lecture, this is a false cognate, a faux ami. Um, lecture is the word, is the word for reading. So faire la lecture is to read. Um, lire is also another verb that means to read. Um, we have not learned to conjugate that yet, um, but you could leave it in its infinitive and tell me, j'aime lire, I like to read. That's how you do that. Faire du théâtre, faire du théâtre. So any type of theater, um, acting type things that you're doing, faire du théâtre. Faire du shopping. Faire du shopping, so um, cognate, that's pretty self-explanatory. Faire du biscuit, something else that you might do, especially um, near holidays or things like that. So um, we already know faire la cuisine, um, to cook, and then this is just specifically something that we are making. So, merci de votre attention. Thanks for paying attention. That was a um, rather whirlwind tour through faire and all the different ways we can use it to make uh, phrases about things we enjoy to do in our spare time.